how many were part of that series at some point or the other. I encourage you, if you were not, get those CDs and listen and listen again. That was elementary Christianity that we need to remind ourselves of over and over and over again. The importance and centrality of mind renewal to the transformation that God wants to bring in our lives after we accept Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? And so, um, beginning a new series tonight on the heels of uh, that message, I just, you know, was praying and asking the Lord, Lord, you know, I always pray, I, you know, sometimes when it's time to preach again and to, to, to bring forth God's word, I always pray and ask, Lord, what is it that you want me to share? And, um, you know, he never disappoints. I mean, he always points in the right direction. And so yesterday I was praying, uh, just waiting on the Lord. And I'm um, praying and crying out to God. And I found myself crying out, Lord, I need your wisdom. How many have ever been there where they felt they needed the wisdom of God? Amen. And so, you know, it was just different things happening and different things that you want to see happen. Maybe things that are supposed to be happening, not happening. And, you know, things that are happening, not supposed to be happening. And just, you know, and here you are, you know, you're... You love the Lord, you come to church, you read the word. And, you know, sometimes you just find yourself in a place, Lord, I need your wisdom. And as I was praying and crying out, you know, uh, the words of a man of God that I highly respect, that made a great influence in my life, came coming back to my heart. He says, uh, I, uh, the greatest problem you have is not a money problem, it's not an opportunities problem, it's a wisdom problem. Amen. And so the Holy Spirit began to uh, um, stir in my heart to bring forth this message or this series on wisdom. Amen? Wisdom. And so we're going to begin tonight, begin to look at this very important and very central truth for us as believers. This thing called wisdom. Amen? Amen? And so as we begin tonight, if you turn with me your Bibles to the book of Proverbs in chapter 4 and in verse 7. Proverbs 4, 7. Um, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. And I in, crave your indulgence. Please uh, latch on to these truths tonight because I'm telling you it will set you up for greater things in God. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7 says this. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Amen? And so, you know, I, I, I looked at this and there's different things that, you know, we believe that people need in the body of Christ and have been talked about and maybe focused on quite a bit. Uh, there's a lot of perceived needs in the body of Christ and people attack those needs, you know. In, 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 in medicine, you know, we were taught that usually, you know, when someone presents to you with symptoms, with symptoms... Uh, you don't necessarily go after the symptoms. You want the symptoms are just a manifestation of something that is happening deeper within. Amen. You don't chase. You don't aim to treat symptoms. You aim to get to the root of the problem, which, if you take care of, the symptoms will eventually vanish. Because if you don't get to the root of the problem, you can treat the symptom. And it may go away, but it will come back. Take a Tylenol. If you can imagine if someone has mala uh, like malaria. Malaria is not common here. But in, in third world countries, if someone has malaria, it's an infection with uh, the malaria bacterium, you know, falciparum malaria. You get by mosquito bites. The symptoms of that are aches and pains, headaches, high fever, 
intermittent fever that comes and goes and chills. So you can imagine if you just take Tylenol, obviously the Tylenol will bring the fever down. May, it may be even relieve the pain. But guess what? When the effect of the Tylenol wears off, here comes the fever again. And the aches and pain surface again. And sometimes that's the way it seems in, in Christendom. When we address the perceived needs or seeming symptoms that people are facing. Amen? And then it seems like it gets better. But then, after a while, it comes back again. <laughs> are you with me tonight? And so if you're going to get to the root of it, one of the, the, the root matters is sometimes people think, oh, what we need is people need love. Yes, people do need love. People need acceptance. Yes, people need acceptance. What people need is breakthrough. Yes, people need breakthrough. What people need is healing. Yes, people need healing. What people need is this. Yes, people need that. All those are definite needs. But there is a greater need that needs to be addressed, which is the need for wisdom. That verse says, wisdom is the principal thing. The principal thing, the primary thing is wisdom. Therefore, get it. Amen? It's the principal thing. Hence, the need for us to talk about this. And I don't think it's addressed enough. Even in, at least in recent times, I haven't heard much teaching or preaching on wisdom. Amen? But wisdom is so central to success. To doing and being and realizing what God has ordained for us. To overcoming the, you know, repeating cycles of just symptoms flaring up and going down. And I speak to you as much as I speak to myself. Because sometimes I get tired of, you know, Lord, why is this not happening the way it's supposed to happen? You know, it's not on God. It's never on God. So the best thing to do is to, not to beat yourself up and condemn yourself, put yourself down, but to examine yourself. The Bible says, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. <laughs> Amen? If it was not necessary to examine yourself, that scripture would not be there. So it's necessary to self-examine so that you can detect what is it that is missing. And one of the key things that I've found missing many times is this thing called wisdom. And we're going to look at this and um, examine and hopefully uh, stir some things up and put us on the right footing and in the right direction to overcoming some of those repeating cycles and experiencing what God intends for us to experience as children of God. You know, I find it interesting that in talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, there's not much said about him growing up. He was born of the virgin. You know, he was, you know, circumcised on the eighth day. And then we uh, catch a little bit of him when he was about 12 years old, going to Jerusalem, you know, talking with the high priest and the, the doctors of the law. But aside from that, there's not much said about him growing up in those years. They call them the silent years. But I noticed that there were two statements made about Jesus that is pertinent for us to look at and spring from. And I'm going to read them to you in the book of Luke in chapter 2. When he came to his growth and development, these were the two statements that were made in the Bible regarding him. I find that interesting. Regarding his growth and development into the 30-year-old rabbi that burst onto the scene and changed the landscape of not just Israel, but the entire world. In talking about his growth and development, there were two statements made in the Bible in reference to his growth and development. What are they? In Luke chapter 2 verse 40, Luke 2 verse 40, it says, And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, 
filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. Amen? And if you jump down to verse 52, as the second statement made, he says, and Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. Of all the things that could be said of him, the Bible chose or chooses to state that he grew in wisdom, stature, and favor with God and men. Now, naturally, we know that everybody grows in stature. That means he grew up. Amen? He grew taller. He grew from a baby to a toddler to a toddler to a, uh, uh, to a young boy. He grew in stature, right? That's natural. That's obvious. He grew in favor with God and men. He says that, uh, uh, he says like this, that Jesus uh, uh, increased in favor with God and men. Uh, he, he was loved by God and ho- all who knew him. And that was a function of the grace of God upon his life. Hello? I said that was a function of the grace of God upon his life. You, if you see the verse in uh, Luke 2.40, it said, And the child grew and was strong and spirit filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. So the grace of God upon his life caused him to be loved by people, God, and people. Are you with me? Amen? So grew in stature. Naturally, everybody grows in stature. Grew in favor with God and men. That was a function of the grace of God. Amen? Even though there's a verse in Proverbs that says, good understanding procures favor. Amen? There's a way you can increase in favor by good understanding. But guess what? The part that had to do with him was that he grew in wisdom. Growth in stature is a function of you eating, right? And just growing up physically. Growth in favor, increase in favor with God and men is a function of the grace of God upon your life. The part that pertained to him was that he grew in wisdom. I find it interesting that that's what the Bible chooses to reference when it talks about the growth of Jesus Christ. He grew in wisdom. Amen? He grew in wisdom. That's the first thing the verse talks about. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. If Jesus needed to grow in wisdom, guess what? You need to grow in wisdom. And it shows the importance. Listen carefully. It shows the importance of wisdom in experiencing and accomplishing all that God has planned for us to do. If talking about the growth of Jesus, the main thing he talked about was he grew in wisdom. Then he shows the importance and necessity of wisdom in experiencing and doing all that God has planned for us to do. Are you with me tonight? Wisdom. Amen? So, everything that Jesus was going to do when he grew up, the statement that the Bible chooses to use to describe his preparation for that was that he grew in wisdom. Amen? He grew in wisdom. You know? Sometimes it's not more prayers that you need. (laughs) Neither is it more anointing. It's just more wisdom. Are you listening to me tonight? (laughs) You know, we know too much. We know too much 
to be stranded. There are places in the world that have no access to one-tenth of what you have come to know and believe. Amen? <laughs> Say with me, I need wisdom. You know, I found it interesting that many times when Jesus was walking around doing the things that God has sent him to do on earth, the description that was used to uh, the words that were used to describe what he was doing. Let me, let, me, let me read some of that to you. Go to Matthew chapter 13 and in verse 54. Matthew 13 verse 54. Matthew chapter 13 and in verse 54. Hallelujah. We will see some things tonight that will help us, I, I believe. Matthew 13 and in verse 54. Matthew 13, verse 54. He says this, And when he was coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished and said, Where has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? This wisdom and these mighty works works. Can I submit something to you? Wisdom will produce mighty works in your life. <laughs> Listen, you can have anointing that is dripping from your fingers, yet you're not doing anything. You pray in tongues from morning till night. The anointing is causing you to shiver. Yet there's no mighty works happening in your life. But you see what they said? Where did this man get this wisdom that is producing these mighty works? Amen? Well, I want to help somebody tonight. Because we don't need more anointing. We have enough anointing. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Sometimes we kid ourselves. Oh, Lord, I need more anointing. You oh, No, you don't. Lord, I need more word. No, you don't. What you do need more of is wisdom. Amen? The companion verse to that, if you look in Mark chapter 6 and in verse 2. Mark 6 verse 2. Mark chapter 6 verse 2. It's kind of the companion verse to that in the book of Mark. It says, and when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, from whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him? That even such mighty works are wrought by his hands. But where did he get this stuff? And what wisdom is this that is given to him? What wisdom that is producing mighty works? Listen, you know what will produce mighty works on your business? Is wisdom. What to produce mighty works through you on your job is wisdom. Amen? That will take the ordinary, that will take the mundane and turn it into a mighty work is wisdom. Amen? Hallelujah. 
And indeed, Jesus said of himself, turn to Matthew 12 and in verse 42. Jesus said of himself, Matthew 12, 42. We're talking about Jesus and the centrality of wisdom to his accomplishing his purpose on earth. Matthew chapter 12, verse 42. So that we can understand that, listen, the accomplishment of God's purpose and will in our lives on this earth Yes, we need the word. Yes, we need anointing. Yes, we need this and that. But you need wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Some people get down on God. Because things ain't happening. It's not God's fault. You need wisdom. Are you listening? In Matthew chapter 12, verse 42, he says, Jesus was talking to them here about, you know, things from the old covenant. And he gets to this point. He says, the queen of the south, that's the queen of Sheba, shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. But one greater than Solomon is here. So he was saying, in effect, listen, the wisdom I operate with surpasses the wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom. Amen. Amen. So listen, even though Jesus carried out his ministry in the power of the Holy Spirit, the success he had also had a lot to do with the wisdom with which he conducted his ministry. I'll say it again. These are stuff that sometimes in, in charismatic circles, we don't really think about. Everything is Holy Spirit. Yes, Holy Spirit. But wisdom I'll make that statement again. Even though Jesus carried out his ministry in the power of the Holy Spirit, the success from the verses we've read so far, the success he had also had to do a lot with the wisdom with which he conducted himself. Amen? Wisdom. So being born of the Spirit, which you are, if you're born again, and being baptized with the Holy Spirit, which most of us are, those things do not negate the need for us to walk in wisdom. Indeed, the Spirit is here to help us and enhance our wisdom to a whole nother level. You don't park wisdom in the treasury room, in the storage room, because you got born again. Hello? Oh, I've accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Now I'm walking by faith and I'm trusting the Lord. And then people park their wisdom in some garage somewhere. And wonder why things aren't happening. Wonder why they're not making progress. After I speak in tongues, I pray, I read my Bible. Good. You need wisdom. So go and take the cover of that wisdom car that you packed in the garage and drive it out and wash it and polish it and begin to use it so that it can carry you to the destination that God has planned in mind for you. Is somebody hearing me tonight? Wisdom. Amen? 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. 
There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. Isaiah 11 from verse 1. If you overhead person, please put it up. Isaiah 11 verse 1. He said, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. A branch shall grow from its roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of what? Wisdom. That's the first thing. Hello? That was talking about Jesus. He is the rod that came out of the stem of Jesse. Amen? The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes. Nor reprove by the hearing of his ears. But in righteousness he will judge the poor. And reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. That means he doesn't estimate and evaluate things based on appearances. He has wisdom. Amen. Uh, am I connecting with somebody tonight? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, if we are to become the champions of faith that God has already called us and destined for us to be, we must understand this important truth regarding wisdom. You've suffered enough. You've been held back enough, hindered enough. God is not partial. It's not your lot to be just marginalized and forgotten. Wisdom is the principal thing. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to delve into this and really look at this truth on the subject of wisdom. And hopefully be able to dissect it. And as we go through, maybe you will locate yourself where you parked your car. <laughs> Now we're riding Holy Ghost train and people pack their cars of wisdom. Are you hearing me tonight? Very quickly, let's define wisdom. Let's define wisdom tonight. Just looking at the English definition of wisdom, looking in several dictionaries, so we can get a clue of what we're talking about here. And these were the best, better ones that I found. In, uh, in the Cambridge Dictionary, it describes wisdom as the ability to use knowledge and experience to make good decisions and judgments. Wisdom is the ability to use knowledge and experience to make good judgments or to make good decisions and judgments. Wisdom is the ability to use knowledge and experience to make good decisions and judgments. Amen? Amen? You know, the Webster's Dictionary, 1828, it says this. Wisdom is the exercise of sound judgment, either in avoiding evils or attempting good. Wisdom is the exercise of sound judgment. Say with me, sound judgment. <laughs> either in avoiding evil or in attempting good. The exercise of sound judgment. And I don't know about you, 
But many times, the problems I find myself in is because I didn't exercise sound judgment. If you'll be honest with yourself, you can't really blame anybody. <laughs> you just didn't exercise sound judgment. You didn't make a good decision. You didn't walk in wisdom. Are you here? Amen. Let me just read a few things I wrote here. It says, as a faculty of the mind, wisdom is good judgment. That is discerning or judging what is most just, proper, useful, and conducive to prosperity and happiness. So as a function of the mind is exercise of good, ju is, is good judgment. Being able to discern, being able to discern or judge what is the most just thing to do, what is the most proper thing to do, what is the most useful thing to do, what is the most, what is most conducive to prosperity and happiness as a function of the mind is good judgment. Being able to evaluate a situation and be able to discern what is the most appropriate thing to do in this situation. Are you hearing me? That's as a faculty of the mind. But also, in the, in the practical sense, wisdom is discretion in exercising sound judgment to do the right thing. Amen? It's discretion in exercising sound judgment to do, to do the right thing. Listen, wisdom is not finished until you do something. Wisdom in the mind that's never acted upon doesn't get you anywhere. Amen? It is discretion in exercising sound judgment in doing the right or prudence in exercising sound judgment in avoiding evil. Basically what that means, when it, when it comes to uh, avoiding evil, wisdom manifests as prudence. You're prudent to avoid evil. When it comes to doing good, it manifests as discretion. You're discreet in doing good and prudent in avoiding evil. I'm just addressing a few definitions here so we understand. So when you say that person is prudent... What you're saying is they exercise wisdom to avoid pitfalls and mistakes. Or when you say that person is discreet, that means they exercise good ju judgment in making the right choices and doing the right thing. Amen? Those are just different shades of meanings for the word wisdom. So we understand what we're talking about. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. A lot of what happens, or a lot of what will happen to us, listen carefully to this, a lot of what will happen to you depends on the choices, decisions, and judgments that you make and act upon. I'll say that again. A lot of what will happen to you. I mean, no, God loves you. Listen, God doesn't love me more than he loves you. If he did, he will be a respecter of persons. And he's not. Say, for God is no what? Respecter of persons. But what's going to happen to me is a function of the choices and decisions and judgments that I make. You know why? God will not make our choices for us. God will not, as much as he loves us, as much as he's committed to our success, he will not make our decisions for us. He will not make our choices for us. Hello? Because we're not puppets in the hand of a puppet master. We're not robots in the hand of a master technician. We're creatures of free will. 
created in the image and likeness of our Father. Amen? Therefore, he will not make our choices, neither will he make our decisions for us. And that is why wisdom is absolutely essential. Amen? And even though he will not make our choices and decisions for us, he expects us to walk in wisdom. That is to use the knowledge and experience we have acquired and learned to make good choices and decisions. God is rooting for you, man. I said God is rooting for you. God is on your side. God is for you. God wants you to win. Are you here tonight? God wants you to win. If he could, he would make your choices for you, but he can't. He can't. He will not violate what he has ordained. And because he can't make your choices for you, that's why there's discrepancies or seeming inequalities in what's happening in different people's lives. It's not because God loves one more than the other or is partial to one over the other. Yes, we have different paths to walk. We don't compare ourselves amongst ourselves and measure ourselves with ourselves. The Bible says that is not wise. But that being said, Many times the reason why things seem to be going good in this person's life, maybe not going good in that person's life, can be traced back to wisdom. Amen? People don't like to hear that because that puts it right back on them. On them. No, they want it to be in God's hands. It, well, it's just, you know, it's just God. You know, we never know whether it's God's will, maybe God's will, God's will for each one of us is that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. That's his will for all of us. Amen? <laughs> so it's right back on us. It's wisdom. Are you with me? Amen? Amen? It's wisdom. The reason we find ourselves in trouble most of the time is because we have exercised poor judgment. We have not exercised wisdom either in being discreet in our choices or prudent to avoid evil. That's why we find ourselves in some of the messes we find ourselves in. Are you with me? How many know that's the truth? <laughs> Amen. That's the truth. Uh, so often this stems from a lack of knowledge. God said in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Remember we said wisdom is the ability to take the knowledge acquired and experience to make good decisions. But if you lack knowledge, how are you going to be able to make good decisions? I said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That was the first part. Look at that verse. Look at the second part of that. Because you have what? Rejected knowledge. Many didn't know that that, that verse was twofold. The first part is you lack knowledge. The second part is you reject knowledge. You know what rejection of knowledge is? You have something has happened to you and by experience, you know this ain't right. But yet you do it again. That means you've rejected the knowledge that that experience brought to you. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will reject you and you will not be a priest to me. Is somebody hearing me tonight? Can we tell the truth tonight? The first is lack of knowledge. And people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. They just don't know. Amen? What's the remedy for that? You teach them. You give them knowledge. 
But then some people are destroyed because they reject knowledge. That means they've been taught. They know. They have even experienced. How many know if you have experienced the pain that a decision caused? Why would you make that same decision again? It just means you rejected the knowledge that that experience brought to you. Amen? Are you with me? Can you imagine a person going to uh, uh, an electric outlet and sticking a fork in it and it gets buzzed. How many know he has gained some knowledge through experience? Don't do that again. But then the next day he goes back and does it again. What did he do? He rejected the knowledge that that experience yesterday brought to him. Are you following what I'm saying? Amen? Lack of knowledge. How many know where knowledge begins? Knowledge begins with the fear and respect for the Lord. The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. But stubborn fools hate wisdom and refuse to learn. That's Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. Proverbs 1.7, I just read that from the easy to read version. It says, knowledge begins with the fear and respect for the Lord. Stubborn fools hate wisdom and refuse to learn. That means they reject knowledge. And hence, they hate wisdom. A person that keeps rejecting knowledge will not walk in wisdom. I'll say a person that keeps rejecting knowledge will not walk in wisdom. They will keep making bad choices. Over and over and over again. And the Bible calls them stubborn fools. They hate wisdom and they refuse to learn. Are you with me? Well, that's none of us, amen? That same verse in the Message Bible, it says this, Proverbs 1-7 in the Message Bible, it says, start with God. The first step in learning is bowing down to God. Only fools thumb their noses at such wisdom and learning. So you start with who? Start with God. The first step in learning is to bow down to God. To respect God. Amen? Amen? We learn from God's word. We learn from experiences of life. If we don't reject knowledge. Amen? We will learn from the word of God, but also from experiences of life if we don't reject knowledge. You know, there's a saying by a man called Seneca. He says, no man was ever wise by chance. <laughs> you don't get wise by chance. You become wise on purpose. Amen? I slept last night and I just suddenly woke up and I was wise. No, it doesn't happen that way. I wish it did. Wisdom requires acquisition of knowledge. Embracing that knowledge, not rejecting it. And then doing something with it. It's wisdom. Amen? Many times the difference between success and failure is wisdom. 
That's why the Lord admonished us, going back to the scripture we started with. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get it. Say with me, get it. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Amen? 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 We're not knowledge rejectors here. I've done it. You've done it. But the less you do that, the more you grow in wisdom. Can you say amen? I mean, you know, we have all at some point or the other rejected knowledge. What do I mean by that? We did something in the past and it brought about a negative or, or, or contrary result. But yet we did it again. We've all done that. But the lesson is this. The less you do that, the more you grow in wisdom. That means you are no longer rejecting knowledge. You are receiving the knowledge that that experience has brought you and letting that enable you to make good choices, decisions, and exercise good judgment in the future. And you say amen. Amen? We're going to close here for tonight. We'll continue tomorrow. Uh, not tomorrow. I wish. <laughs> we'll continue next week talking about this very important truth or wisdom. And next week we'll look at the different sources of learning and experience from which we develop wisdom. There are different sources and we're going to examine them. There's natural wisdom, there's spiritual wisdom, and there's devilish wisdom. The Bible talks about the three of them. We're going to examine those three uh, different sources of wisdom and see that each one has its place. Yes, it does. Some to build, some to destroy. And as we talk about it, we can evaluate where we find ourselves and then correctly position ourselves to walk in wisdom and experience the same level of success. Listen, listen. We can experience the same level of success that Jesus experienced on the earth. Yes, we can. That's right. Amen? Amen.